Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this video, we are going to be building a to-do list application using Django. So this is going to be built from the ground up. It's not meant to be a full overview of Django here. It's a simple uh, project-based tutorial, but I will try to start from the very beginning and try to make this as beginner friendly as possible. So before we get started, let's go ahead and just demo the application. So what we have here is a pretty simple to-do list application that handles basic CRUD functionality. So create, read, update, and delete. And we can also view items. So let's go ahead and try to update an item. So we'll go to edit video. Let's just say we wanted to update that. So we'll just do updated. We modified it. If we want to change the status, we can mark that as complete. And we can also delete items and add new items. So this is also going to have search functionality. So if we want to search something, we can go ahead and just type in E X here. And now we get only every item with the characters of EX for the description and so on. So we can, we can fully search it. We can log out and we can also register user accounts and log in as users. So only a user that is logged in can see their own information. If we don't have an account, we can't log in. So if I try to go to that homepage to see a list, we can't see anything, but once we do log in, we're not going to be able to see other users information. So I really want to add in login and authentication, show you how to set permissions and restrict users from maybe accessing a certain item. So that's the application and we are going to be using class based views. So what I'm trying to do in this video is also extend my last video where I talked about what class based views are and uh, if we should use them, I did a full video on that where I did a breakdown. So if you don't know what class based views are, uh, you can still follow along because I'm just going to be implementing this, but I would recommend checking that video out along with the related article. So that's all going to be linked up in the video description. It'll give you a nice overview. And then uh, my plan is to make this video a part two of that, but you can technically start wherever you want. So let's go ahead and close that out. Actually, I want to open up that article because we will reference it. So that's on my website, dennisiv.com. Let's open that article up right here and we'll just keep that handy. So I'm going to turn off my server and we want to basically just close out this application. So we have nothing on and let's start from the ground up. So we are using Django. So you are going to need to be familiar with Python. You need to have that installed. And if you don't have Django installed, well, you can just run a simple pip install for Django. So I'll open up my command prompt and let's go ahead and just open this up here. We can just do pip install Django. I already have it. So it might just update the version for me, but looks like everything is up to date. So I'll just CD into my desktop. This is where I want to store my project here and to start my project to get my boilerplate files. I'll just do Django dash admin start project. And then I need to give my project a name. So this is just going to be to do list. Okay, so I have my project and that's all set up. So I'll actually close this up because I will be using VS code as my text editor. You can use whatever you want. So I'll just open that up. So if you're using a different text editor that doesn't have the terminal, you can just go ahead and continue using the command prompt. So I'm going to find my project, get all my boilerplate files here. So to do list right here, and this is everything that Django gives us. So that command gives us all of our boilerplate files with some code. We have our settings.py file, our base URLs file, and so on. So the first thing we want to do here is create an app. So apps are basically small components of a website. This basically just lets us break our application up into multiple parts. So we're just going to create our application and that's where the core logic to any project should be. So the project is like the, the structure of it, the basic settings, and then the actual app is where we add logic. So to open up our terminal, we could just do terminal and new terminal. I use the shortcut shortcut of control shift tilde and that should open that up. So we're in our terminal. If you want to set up your virtual environment, you could do that. Uh, we only need Django. There's not many third party packages we need. So I'm just going to use this right here and I'm not going to set up that virtual environment, but I'll leave that up to you. So to create our app here, I'm just going to run Python manage dot py start app. So it's like our start project command, except for this gives us our boilerplate files to our app. So we need to name our app. So in this case, I'm just going to call it base because we are going to have one base app for our entire project. We're not going to create different sections of it. So once I run that, we have our project files and 
our app. So our app gives us our views file, models, admin, and so on. So this is just a quick refresher of our setup here. So inside of our application, the first thing we wanna do is run our server, make sure everything is running. So we'll just do Python manage py run server. And I just wanna make sure everything is set up here. So let's go to our server on port 8000. I just have that saved automatically. So as a quick trick right here, you could just go to this right here and bookmark that. So I have it bookmarked. That's how I can open it up so fast. So this is my application so far. There's nothing here. Our boilerplate Django files just build this for us. So what I wanna do is first connect my views and URLs files so we can have some URL routing. So we'll go into our project here and we need to create some URLs inside of our app and then connect it to this base URLs.py file so the URLs inside of our application can handle all of the routing. So before we do that, we need to first connect our project to our application because the two don't know about each other. So I need to connect settings.py and I need to connect that to base, so that's my app name, to that folder, dot apps. So if I go into base, we see apps and I wanna point it to its config setting right here. So we're just gonna to point to base dot apps dot config. So this just lets Django know about my app. Now the two are connected and they know about each other. So now I wanna connect my URLs here. So we'll go into base and we need to create a urls.py file. So we'll just do uh, urls.py. Let's go ahead and create a few imports here. So we need to import from django.urls and we wanna import the path function. So import path. So that's how we create our URL patterns here. So I wanna go ahead and import all of my views. I don't have any yet, but I just wanna do a mass import. So whenever we do have them, they'll be added here. So let's just do from dot import views. So they're in the same file structure. So that's why we can do that. And then we wanna create a URLs patterns. And then that's gonna be a list. I think that's URL patterns, so not URLs. So right now we don't have any URL patterns, so let's go ahead and create those. So we'll go into our views, and the first thing I wanna do is render out a simple view just to make sure these are connected. So I'm gonna create a function-based view because uh, we are gonna use class-based views later, but I wanna make a quick one. So we'll just do, uh, let's just call this task list. So that's gonna be the name of our first view. We'll pass in request. And I wanna return back a simple HTTP response. So we'll just do from Django.http import HTTP response. Okay, so now with our function, we can just do return HTTP response. And this will be to do list. Okay, so we have our view. Now we can take this view, we'll add it to our URL pattern. So we'll just set the path here. Let's add in a comma after the function. And we want that to be our base URL, so we'll set that to an empty string. And then we can do views, because we imported our views right here. And then dot, and then the view name. So the view name is task list. We wanna give our URL pattern a name here also. So this is gonna be uh, tasks, like that. We can save that, and this still doesn't complete it. So the last step here, is to go to our project urls.py file. So we have one in our project and one inside of our app. So we need to let our project know about our app's URLs. So for this, we need the include function and we'll go in here, we'll create a path here. We'll set that to an empty string. We'll use include and in a string, we're gonna use or we're gonna point to base.urls. So the include method just basically says we are gonna include a different urls.py file. So whenever a user pulls up whatever route this is, in this case, it's an empty string. So take all of these routes and then send this routing to this urls.py file. So let that file handle it. So I'll save my views and URLs and let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'll refresh that and there we go. So we have our simple HTTP response. So now that that's set up here, what I wanna do is set up my models.py. So for those of you that aren't familiar with models, uh, that's just how we build out database tables in Django, and they're simply classes that represent a table. So 
basically the class is the table and then all the attributes are the model, uh, not, not columns, or yeah, the model columns. So we'll go into models and this is how we create our database structure. So once we create it, we'll have to migrate our database and I'll show you what that means. So we're gonna have one class here and this is gonna be called task. So this is a database table and to make this a model, we just need to inherit from models dot model and we'll create some attributes. So we'll create some attributes. So I'll just make them and then we'll actually set the values. So we first need a user and then we need a title for a task. Then we want a description. And then after our description, we want to set the value of complete. So is the item complete or is the task complete? And then we want to set the created time and date. So our user, by default, we want a task to be owned by a specific user. So what I'm going to do is import the built-in Django user model. So Django already has a few tables built out for us. One of those is going to be for our users. So we're going to do from Django.contrib. And then we'll just do dot auth dot models. Okay, so we have that and then we want to import the user model and that's going to be with a capital U. So the user model takes care of our user information like username, email, password. And this is how Django by default handles authentication. So we're going to run that against the user model. So to set the value, we need to create a many to one relationship. This means that uh, or a one to many relationship. We can have one user and that user can have many items. So this is that many to one relationship and that can be set with uh, foreign key value. So we'll do models dot foreign key. We need to set that relationship to a model. In this case, the model name is the user. And the first value I want to set is on delete. So on delete just means what do we do with a task if the user gets deleted? So let's say uh, we have a user in the database. For some reason, the admin deletes them or the user deletes their account. What happens to the task? Well, in this case, I want the task just to stay there and just let the user value or actually no, I want to delete the task. So if a user gets deleted, all the child tasks get deleted. So to do this, that's going to be models.cascade. Now, if we wanted that value just to be set to null, we could do dot set underscore null. This means that if a user gets deleted, the items remain. So I want to delete them. So we'll just do cascade. And then I want to set the value of null to true. This means that in the database, this in theory could be an empty field. And then whenever we submit a form, we also want to allow that value to be blank right there. So we want to set that to true. And I usually set this to true when I'm starting my applications and when I'm testing them, because uh, I don't want to have to run into these issues when I'm adding and deleting items in production, because I just want to get things done quickly without having to do it right necessarily. So that's why I set it to null by default. So we have our title. Now the title is going to be just a string. So we just want to set the character field. And in this case, with that char field, uh, we want to set the max length. So how long can this value be? So we want to set that to 200 characters. And I'm just going to paste in null and blank. So I'll just leave that there. You might want to not allow that item to be true or blank, but I'll leave it just like that. So actually for this, in this case, a title should be there. So there shouldn't be any reason why we shouldn't have that name. So for the description, this needs to be also a string, but I also want to make it a text field. So we have more options. So in this case, a character field is, is usually meant for like a headline, a name, uh, simple values, but a text field gives us like a, if this were a form, it would give us a box to write in like a message or something. So in this case, I want to set null and blank to true and that's going to give us a text field. So when I save it, it auto formats that and that's just VS code. So if that if you see that skip right there, that's what's happening. That's just a plugin I use and you can look that up. So for complete, let's just do models and then we'll do a Boolean field. So this is just going to be a true a true or false value. So complete by default when we create an item, I want the default value to be false. So when an item is first created, it's probably not going to be complete. So we just want to set that and then created. We want to make that created, not create. So for this, I want to set this to a date time field. So models dot date time field. So not date field, but date time field. So we want to get the date and the time it was created. Now, 
whenever a model is created, we want to auto populate this information. We don't want to have to actually add it. So there's an attribute here that's called auto now add and we'll set that to true. So that means automatically just take a snapshot. If I create this item on, uh, let's say 311. So March 11th at 8:50 PM, go ahead and just set that to be the timestamp and the date. So to turn or to close this out, let's go ahead and set the string value. We'll just do underscore underscore string. We'll pass in self here. This is the string representation of the model and the official name of it. And what I want to do is return self dot and then we'll just do title. So we want to set the default value to title. And I also want to set the default ordering. So I'll just set some metadata here. So we'll just do class meta. And in this case, I'll set ordering. And we want to order the model by the complete status. So any complete items should be sent to the bottom of the list because they're done. We don't need to focus on those anymore. So this is how we can order a query set. So this means that whenever we're returning multiple items, order it by this value here. Okay, so we save that. And if you're new to Django, we have to do something called a migration. So there's two things we need to do to migrate our database. So by default, Django has an SQLite database, so we don't have to set that up. It's already made for us. And to actually make these migrations occur, so to actually create this table in the database, we have to prep our migrations. So I'm going to run a command called python manage.py make migrations. So what this is going to do, if we go to our application here, so into our app base, looks like we have no files inside of migration. So if I make this migration, it's going to create a file for us. So now we see 0001 underscore initial dot py. So what's happening here is it created this file for us and it's letting us know that when we run our official migration, run these SQL commands and create the table for or in our database. So now when I run a command called python manage dot py migrate, so I'm not going to run it just yet. Give me a second. What it's going to do is it's going to take all these migrations and it's going to create them in the database. But Django also has other database tables prepped for us. So we have that user model that we're about to use. We have sessions and a few other tables that Django will create by default for us. So because this is the first migration, we're going to see multiple migrations occur. So we see applying all these migrations, auth, admin, content types, and so on. And here we see base dot zero zero one underscore initial. So we just applied all of these migrations along with the default ones. So now we just prepped our database and all of those are set. And anytime we make a change to our models file. So if we want to add a new model, add in maybe some, or maybe update a model here, we have to rerun those migrations. So those changes are applied in the database. Let's go ahead and turn on our server. I'm going to go ahead and run server. And I want to show you something here. So we want to go into the admin panel. And before we actually start working with this and rendering templates and data, I want to show you the default Django admin panel. So if we go to forward slash admin, so if you don't know how to get here and how that's set up, go to your base URLs file inside of your project, not the app. If we go to admin, that's Django configuring it for us. So we have this admin panel and it's basically an interface for us to start working with our database without actually having to build in the functionality. So we can view items, modify data and so on. So to actually log into the admin panel, we need to create a user. So let's go into our terminal here. We'll turn it off. We'll just do control C to do that. And I'm just going to do Python manage dot py create super user. And this is going to give me a prompt right away. So this is giving me my computer name. We can modify the username to whatever we want. I'll just leave that blank or I guess I'll just type in user or the username I want. So I'll, I'll set that to Dennis Ivy and then we'll just set the username to Dennis Ivy at email.com. So that's a fake email. And then we'll be prompted to create our password. So when I'm typing, uh, you're not going to see anything, but by default, uh, it's actually typing for us or as we're typing, it's, it's actually happening. We just don't see it. It's for security purposes. So go ahead and confirm it. Once everything's done, we should see this message that our user was created. So I'm going to turn on the server and we'll just go ahead and open up our admin panel again. 
and we want to log in as this user. So my data was already populated. I'll go ahead and log in. Maybe I have a different password for that user. Oh, my username was Dennis Ivy. Okay, so we see our admin panel here. So in here we can see groups right here. We can see our users, which is Dennis. We can add in a new user. So let's just add in some information. Let's see if it lets me create that short of a password. It doesn't, but you get the point. We can add information. And if we want to update a user, we can modify this user's information. So one thing that we're not seeing here is our task model. And that's because once we create it in the database, we also need to register it with our Django admin panel. So we'll close out that URLs file. We'll go into our application base. We'll go into admin. And in here, we want to register that. So we'll just do from dot models. So we're going into our models.py file. Let's go ahead and import task. So that's the model we want to import. Then I just want to register it. So we imported it. Now we can do admin dot site dot register. And we'll just set that to task. So we just registered our model with our admin panel. So now if I go into my admin panel, if I refresh that, now we can see it. So the reason why I wanted to do this was one, if you don't know the admin panel, you can see what's going on here. And two, I want to create some tasks here. So let's just do uh, get milk. We'll just create some items here. Let's set that to complete. Then we'll just do wash car. And I want to set these to the user. So we have to manually set this. And then let's just do clean house. Okay, so we have one complete item and two incomplete items. So we have our items and we want to start rendering these out. So I added those to the database. So let's go ahead and actually create our first class based view and list these out. So we'll go back into our views.py file and we need to change this up. So because we're using a class based view, we can actually get rid of this HTTP response and I want to modify this view, but we first need to make an import. So the first view is from Django dot views dot generic dot list. And then we want to import the list view. So I talked about this in my last video and it's also in this article, which is linked up. So check out that video, uh, check out this article. If you want to familiar, familiarize yourself with it, this is supposed to be more of an implementation video. So we won't go into too much detail. So we import the list view and let's just go ahead and modify this view. So I'm going to change this from a function and this is going to be a class now. So by default, uh, the name can still stay like that, but because it's a class, I like to capitalize the first letter here and camel case that not camel case it, but capitalize every word in or every letter, every first letter in that word, I guess. And let's go ahead and change request here for list view. So now we're inheriting from list view, which means that we have all the functionality list view has. And this view right here is supposed to return back a template with a query set of data. So we can take this out and at a minimum list view just re uh, requires a model or it requires a query set, which I'll show you in a second. So the model is task here. So to utilize this view, we're actually done with it. So I'll talk about the magic under the hood in a second here, but we can actually take this view and because it's a class, I like to use them differently inside of my views.py file. So in this case, I'm going to do from dot views import, and then we'll import task list. So this view that we just created that inherits from list view. So I'll save that and let's go into our URL. So now I want to get rid of views here and I want to throw in task list. So our URL resolver can't use a class inside of it. So what we need to do is use a method that this view has right here. And we want to trigger the as view method. And that's going to trigger a function inside of that view, depending on the method type. So if it's a post or a get request, now it knows what to do. So we need to add that because it's a class and we can leave everything as is. Now, if I save this, we're technically done with our view and URL, but we're going to get one issue. And that is because we have not configured our template yet. So if I refresh this, now we're going to see an error. So give this a second. Did I not have my server on? Task is not defined. 
So I forgot to import that. So from dot models import task. Let's save that and let's take a look. Okay, so we get this error. So by default, list view already knows what template it wants. So I talked about this in the article and I'll pull up that section here and that is inside of list view. So by default, this view looks for a template name with a prefix of task. So whatever your model name is, if your model was called product, then it would look for product and then the suffix of underscore list dot HTML. So right now we don't have that. So Django is looking for uh, inside of our application, it's looking for task underscore list on HTML and we have not made it. And we can actually change this template name later, which we'll talk about. So let's go ahead and configure that. So if you're new to Django and you don't know how to create templates or where to store them, there's different ways of doing it. But the method I'm gonna use is by storing them inside of our app. So in our app here, I'm gonna create a folder. This needs to be called templates. And inside of templates, it seems kind of weird, I know, but we have to create another folder with the name of our app. And our app is called base. So whatever you called your app, make a template or a folder called template, and then inside of that folder, another folder with the app name. So inside of templates, inside of base, I'm gonna create a file, and this is gonna be called task underscore list dot HTML. Okay, so we created that. We won't worry about setting up our boilerplate Django files. We'll style this video in the second part here. So we'll first create our functionality. It's not gonna look good, but we're not gonna focus on styling till later in the video. So let's just create a title here and then we'll just say my to do list. So we have our list right here and that's gonna be it for now. So we didn't have to connect this to our view. Our view already looks for that. So that's something that Django class-based views do for us. They simplify things like that. So now if I refresh it, now we have our template and it just kind of happens. So it just found it. So the next thing is we wanna render out some data in our template. Well, how do we get that query set in the template? How does Django pass it in? So by default, Django calls that query set object list. So I referenced that in the article, if we look here, by default with the query set, Django is gonna look for objects list and I wanna customize this name too. So we'll go in here, let's go into our template and I wanna just render out all my to-do list items uh, inside of a table. So let's just create a table and we'll just create a row here. So we'll create a table row for our header row and we'll create the table headers. So let's just say item and then that's gonna be it for now. So we wanna loop through all the items. So in this case, we'll just do for task in, and then we have to do object underscore list. And then let's close that out. So we wanna end that for loop. We'll just do end for. And I wanna render out another row and we'll change that to a TD like that because it's not the header. So in this case, let's go ahead and just render out the item. So we'll just do item or task dot uh, title here. Okay, and then I also wanna make sure that if this list is empty, we wanna do empty or an empty condition. And this is just uh, Django's templating syntax. So if you're not familiar with that, this is how we can write Python-like logic. And then these double curly braces is how we can throw in variables into our templates. So we just wanna set an empty here and then we'll just say, if the list is empty, just say no items in list. So that's just a conditional. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and refresh that. And here we go, we have all of our items. Those are listed out. And if we didn't have any, we would see that message. So right now we look for the objects list. So that's the query set name. So if I wanna customize that, if we go back to the article, all we have to do is we can set the context object name. So we can change this to anything we want. We can change this to pickles for all I care. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do is go to the views. We'll just say context object name. And I wanna call this tasks. So whatever you wanna call it, go ahead and change it to that. And now in our template, we can refer to that as tasks. And that's a little bit more readable. Uh, it's a little bit more readable and better than just object list. So now if I refresh that, everything should work. So we're gonna do a lot more with this, but what I wanna do is now focus on the detail view. So the detail view 
is simply a view that returns back information about a simple item. So when we click on a task, we want to get more information about this item. So let's say we go to forward slash task and then the ID like we did in our demo. We want to pull back the item information about that specific task. So just like Django class based views do with the list view, there's also another view and that's going to be called a detail view. So it's detailed information about an item. So this is going to be from Django views generic dot detail and we'll just do detail view. OK, so for this, we're going to create another class. So we'll create the class. This is going to be called task detail or whatever you want to call it. And we are simply going to inherit from detail view. So we'll just do detail view. And in this case, just like the list view, we're going to pass in the model name and the model name is task. So now this view looks for a template with the prefix of the model name. So task and then underscore detail dot HTML. So this one right here for a view look for underscore list. This one looks for underscore detail. So let's add that template and we'll just do new file and we'll just do task dot HTML or task underscore detail. OK, so task detail HTML. So let's just add in an H1 tag and we'll just say task. We'll not pass in any information just yet. So we have the view. We want to import the view into our URLs here. Let's create a new path here. And in this case, the view by default looks for a primary key, so a PK value. So in this case, we'll set that as an integer and we'll just set that to PK. So make sure you name it this. If we want to customize it, there's a name, there's a way to override that. But by default, the view is going to look for that. And we want to set this to task detail. So task detail dot as view, set the method. The name is going to be task. So now we have the URL. So the task name or just task the ID. We have the view, which returns back task detail template. So let's go ahead and just test this out. So We'll go back in here and we're running these by an ID. So just an integer value. So the first view should be with the ID of one. And now that works. So let's pass in the data. So for our query set in the template, it looked for an object list. So in this case, in the detail view, it looks for object. So all we have to do is just say object here. And I don't like this name, but I'll show it to you and then we'll customize this. So now we see, or we should see information about an object. So one is get milk, two is wash car, three is clean house, and then four, well, we don't have that. So to customize this name, to make it anything we want, we can go back into our views and let's set the context object name. So it also has the same attribute, except for this time, it's not object list, it's object. We wanna change that to just task. So if I go into my detail, now that's task here and that should still work. So I want to override the template right now. So let's modify that before we go to the next view. So what I want to do really quick is go to the template and let's say I just want to call that task. So I don't want task detail. I want it to just be task. So in this case, if I refresh it, it's going to give us an error because we don't have that or it's looking for task detail. And all I have to do is go into settings or my views and I just need to set the template name and I can do this for list view and all the other views. So the template name is going to be, I believe I have to point to my app name first. So I have to go to base and then we'll just say task.html. So I'm just telling it don't look into base or don't look for task underscore detail, look for task. So I set the template name and that should fix this issue. OK, so there we go. And that's how we're able to customize that. So that's the detail view. We're just returning information about a specific item. So let's actually go into my task list right here. Let's add in another table and let's just say view here. So let's create a link here. We'll just do view and we'll just use the Django URL tag here. So we'll just do href. And that's going to be with the curly braces, the percent signs we will say URL. And then in single quotes, we'll say task 
and then outside of the single quotes I'll just pass in the task dot ID okay so what did I do here that looks a little bit weird okay so that should set it and I just want to create an empty header just so my table looks correct let's go ahead and try this again so let's go to my list right here if I go to view get milk house car or wash car and that looks good so far so we're not going to use the detail view much because when I click on an item I want to edit it not just view it but that gives you basically the summary of the detail view so let's go ahead and go to the create view so we want to know how to create an item and this is where a little bit more complex logic comes in at least for the view itself so we don't really have to do too much because class-based views take care of that for us but let's go ahead and start that so we'll go ahead and close out our models for now our admin.py file we don't need settings for now so for the create view we need to import from django.views and then we'll go into dot generic dot edit and I want to import the create view and there's a few views we're going to import from our, our from our edit views so we're going to also import update and delete later but that's going to be it for now so for our create view give me a second here let's go ahead and start creating that view now so we'll create the class and we're going to call this task create so this is going to inherit from the create view now the create view has more complex logic because we are actually sending a post request and we have to create an item so there's a few things that go into this so by default it's going to look for a template with uh, the prefix of task so the model name and then form.html so we'll just create that and let's just say uh, h3 and then task form so we just want to get that out of the way now for the view itself it also requires a model so there, there's a lot of a uh, repeating or we're repeating a lot of logic here so we'll just set the model name and the next thing we want to do here so by default the task view or the create view uses model form so I talked about this let's pull this up here so we'll go to the create view there's a lot of links here that are helpful if we go into the source code so we'll go into the create view let's see where is that so this is the actual view that we're using so this is the code so we see the template suffix name this inherits from base create view so we want to go to this we see our get and post request let's go to process form view and let's see I'm not seeing the model form so we'll just go ahead and just start adding that in and I'll just talk about it instead so by default the create view already gives us a model form to work with so if you're not familiar with model forms it's basically a class representation of a form based on a model so it's going to take this model and it's going to create all the fields by default for us so you probably should be familiar with model forms if not you'll see in a second so it already creates it for us so what we need to do is specify the fields that we want so we could list out each field individually like title so what fields do we want to show in our form so title and then we can do description and so on so what I want to do is I want to list out all of the fields so we'll just do underscore underscore all and just like that okay so we want to list out all of the items in the field now after that I also want to make sure that whenever this form is submitted we can redirect our user successfully to a different page so we also need to add this to our create view so I'm going to create an import here and this is going to be an import called reverse lazy which just redirects our user to a certain part of our page or our application so from django.urls we just want to import let's just do reverse lazy so there's also the reverse method I won't talk about the differences there I just want to uh, get to using that so in this case let's go ahead and go into our task view so give me one second I need to pull up the demo that I'm working with and in here we need to set the attribute of success URL so remember from our article if you don't want to read that we'll go into this right here so this is a link that I'm providing with it this is where I'm referencing and where I can find all the attributes so we can see fields form class which we'll get to in a second context object name 
and so on. So this is all, these are all the, the attributes and methods that the view has. So let's go back in here. And the success URL is gonna be set to reverse lazy. So that was one of those attributes. So if everything goes correctly, go ahead and redirect the user to tasks. So I'm just passing in the URL name, which is tasks. So that means when we create an item, just send the user back to the list. So we have our form. So let's go ahead and, or we have our template. So we'll update that in a second. So let's go back to our URLs. We wanna import task create. Let's go ahead and just copy this one right here, paste that below, and we'll just say create. Create task, let's just do that. And then end that with a forward slash. So we'll change this to task create now. We wanna trigger that view. And then we'll just do, actually let's call it task dash create just to keep naming consistency with our actual view. So task dash create. Okay, so we have our URL pattern. So what I'm gonna do here is first manually go to that URL and then we'll add in a link. So we'll go here, let's just do task dash create. And let's see, using model form mix in base class task create without fields is prohibited. I thought I set that, so let's see what's going on here. We have fields, okay, so that needs to be with an S. So we either need the fields attribute or if we create our own model form, just like I show in the article here, we can create our own form and just set the form class and then whatever our model form is. So we won't do that but we also can use that as an option instead of setting fields. So let's go back here, fields, that's set now, we fixed that error. Let's go back in here. Okay, so there we go. So we just wanna link to it and then we'll create the form in a second or we will render that form. So we'll go to our task list and at the top of this list, let's just say add item or something. So we'll just create a link here and we'll say add item or add task, we'll create that URL. So href, let's go ahead and set that URL and then we'll just say task dash create. So that's what I called the, the URL name here. So we'll go in here and we'll worry about URL routing later, like going back and forth and so on. So for now, let's just add a task and we don't have a form yet. So this is what a model form is. So let's go to this form page and let's first create an HTML form. So we'll just start the form, the form itself. We'll set the method. That's gonna be a post request and the action, well, we're not gonna set anything because we're just gonna send it to the same URL. So we could manually write that in, but I'm just gonna leave that blank. So in this form, I wanna go ahead and set an input value. This is gonna be the type of submit. So it's gonna be a submit button. And then the actual value, let's just say submit. Okay, so we have our form, but we don't have our fields yet. And Django already created the model form and it passes it in. And by default, the form name is already form. So it's just called form. So let's just do a double curly brace and we'll just say form. If I save that, then we're gonna see it like that. So there we go. So if I want to format that, we can go ahead and just do dot as P and make that a little bit better. So we're not going to style it right now. We're just going to go ahead and create that. So now it just goes like this and we can create an item. So at this point we have to manually set the username. So for now we'll do that. And then later on it'll be automatically set to the default user. And then there's no need to see that value. So let's just say form created this set some description, submit it. And it looks like we forgot to pass in a CSRF token. So let's go ahead and add that. This is gonna protect us from cross-site forgery request here. So let's just do CSRF underscore token, not request, but attacks. So we just need to add that token, it protects us. And let's try that one more time. What happened here? So I think that was supposed to be not as a variable, but we need to add in the percent sign. Okay. So I think it's supposed to be like that. Okay, so we set our user 
model form created this and submit it. So there we go. So it created it for us. It's right here. We can view it and it redirected us back to the list because of this attribute. So it goes ahead and it sends that back in here. So what's happening is with all those mixins, if we look into this article, and this is where I highly recommend you read that because you'll understand what's going on here if you follow the article and then actually go into the links that I recommend here because we have that view and then we have all of these mixins. And with the combination of these mixins, what happens is we send post requests and this form that's already added almost magically, it's just kind of there, gets submitted, it processes that information and it takes care of all of that for us. So in theory, all we do is create the view, set the model, set the field, set the redirect value, and just like magic, there we go. If we were using function-based views, we would have to do every single part of that and take care of all the details. So we really save a lot of time just by doing that. So that's the create view. And what I wanna do is actually create the update view now. So the update view, let's actually create a back button in our form. So it's gonna use the same form. So let's go ahead and just create a backlink first. And we'll just say, go back. So we'll go here, let's create the link itself. Let's see, so we'll add that in, set the URL, and then we just wanna go back to tasks. So when we're editing, if we for some reason don't wanna modify a form or create an item, we can go to add task and then go back here. Okay, so let's go to the update view. So the update view, like I said, it's pretty similar to create view. That's gonna be imported from generic.edit so we can just do update view and this view is supposed to take in an item it's supposed to pre-fill a form and then once we submit it just like the create view creates an item the update view is supposed to modify the data so let's create that view here we'll just do class task update and we'll just do update view so we need to set the model model is going to be task like we've done before uh, for the fields, it's also using a model form. So we can actually take both of these values and we want to redirect back to the task list. So by default, in the documentation, it tells us that this view also looks for a template with the model name and then the prefix of underscore form. So if I go to my task list, what I want to do here is I want to add in an edit link. So we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this we'll say edit and then this is going to be task we haven't set the url yet so let's copy that view right there we want to import that and let's just go ahead and take this one right here and we just want to do task dash edit or let's just do update just to keep that convention yeah i called it update and then we'll just do task update Okay, so we have the view, we wanna do task-update, and we have the name. So we wanna take this name right here, we'll go to task list, and we'll change that to task update, and we also have to pass in the ID, so whatever task we're trying to update. So let's save all of this, we'll save our form, and if I go back to our list right here, let's go to model view created this, let's see what's happening here. So if I go to add item, we see a form. If I go to edit, for some reason, it's not pre-filling that. Did I not specify the fields? Oh, I was clicking on the view button and not the edit button. So I just had to refresh the page. So if I refresh that, now we can go to edit. And there we go. So that's pre-populated. We're going to the edit link. So if we go here, we can see our form is filled out. We can say get milk updated. And just like magic, it's all updated. So now we have our list item or list view, detail view, create view, update view. And the last view that I'm gonna show you is gonna be the delete view. So the delete view, if I were to summarize this and explain what it is, so we'll go down here, down to delete view. So the delete view is supposed to be like a confirmation page. So it does two things. It renders out a page that says, are you sure or in theory, it renders a confirmation page. What we add to it is up to us, but we're gonna say, are you sure you wanna delete this item? And then when we send a post request, it's gonna delete that item. So it also works like magic underneath the hood. 
So let's go in here and that's going to be from our generic edit view. So what I'm going to do is actually go to the list first. We'll go in here and we just want to say delete here. And for now, we're just going to set that to an empty value right there. So let's go back to our list. So now we have view, edit and delete. And let's create that view. So in our view, we first need to import that. So delete view. Let's go back in here or underneath our update view. We'll just do class delete view. That's going to import or inherit from the delete view. And we need to set the model name. So what model do we want to delete? This is going to be task. And by default, the context object name is going to be object two. So we just want to set that to task. So we've used this before in the template. We just want to set that and render it out by task and not just by object. So we have that and we also need to add in the success URL because once we delete an item, we need to be able to redirect a user. So we just want to take care of all of that. So let's go ahead and start building out our template. So by default, the view here looks for a template with the prefix of the model name and then the suffix of, let's see, what was that? That's going to be the suffix of underscore confirm underscore delete dot HTML. So that's what the view is looking for by default. So let's create that. So we'll just do task underscore confirm. So confirm underscore delete dot HTML. Okay, so we have the template. And what I want to do in this template is I'm just going to create a form because we do need to send a post request. Now, if we were using JavaScript, we wouldn't need to necessarily create a form. We could just have a button that sends that post request. But in this case, we're going to have to use the form here. So I'm going to set the CSRF underscore token. And then the method type is going to be the post. And I'm not going to set the action because that by default is going to this page. So or this same URL. So we'll just set that method. And let's just write in a question here. So let's just say, uh, are you sure you want to delete this task? So are you sure you want to delete this task? And then let's just output the task inside of a quote here. And this is what I meant by the context object name. So we can pass that in like that. Then we also want a confirmation button. So we'll just do input. That's going to be a submit button. And then the value is going to be submit. And then the t or the value is going to be delete. And then the type is going to be submit. So we're just submitting a form. So let's just do submit for the type. And then let's just do go back here. So we'll just add in a go back link. So let's just add in href. And that's going to point to our list. So we'll just do URL. And then we'll just do tasks. Okay, so we have our confirmation page. Now that should link up to that. So let's see, we have our view, our delete view. Let's save that we want to import that into our URLs here. So we just want to add in our delete view. Let's copy and paste this right here. Let's paste in delete view right there task. And we'll change that to task delete. And that's also going to be delete right here. Delete view, we pass in the ID and everything checks out. We have our confirmation page, which we'll save and then in our list, let's go ahead and pass in the URL here. So for the URL, We'll just do URL and then task dash delete. And then we'll just throw in the ID. So task dot ID. Okay, so let's see what we have here so far. So if I refresh this, click on delete. So wash car, are you sure you want to delete it? Where is my back button? So confirm delete. Let's add and go back. It looks like I just had no text there. Okay, so we can go back. We don't want to delete that, but now we want to confirm it. And there we go. So now that's deleted and we have one item, which is get milk. We can update that and there we go. So now we have full create, read, update and delete functionality. And we are ready to start customizing a few things. So what I want to do is create our login functionality. So we'll create our login and log out functionality, our registration functionality, and then 
we'll add in a little bit more and then we'll start styling things. So let's go ahead and start working on that. So let's go back to our page here and what I want to do here is actually add in a condition here so we can check if a user is authenticated. If they are not, we want to provide a link for them to log in, which eventually they'll just be redirected to that link or to that login page. And then if they are registered, we want to display the username with a logout button. So let's start by going to our template here. So this, uh, let's see, we'll go into our list right here. So at this point, this has nothing to do with class-based views. This is just checking if our user is logged in. And at the top here, let's see, we have my to-do list. Let's create like a representation of a header bar. So we'll just create a line here with an HR tag and we want to create a condition. So we can actually or we can actually access the logged in user with the request object here. So we can actually just do request.object. So we'll create the curly braces, request.object, or sorry, not request.object, but request.user. So we can actually see the logged in user just like that. So if I go in here, we should be logged in. So we can see that the user is Dennis Ivy. Now, if I go ahead and go to the admin panel, so by default, Django is using sessions to register my user. So if we actually go in here and we go to inspect, if we go to memory, application, cookies here, we should see a session ID. So if I delete this, that should log us out. So that's how Django uh, handles users, it uses session authentication in the beginning and later on we can customize this if we want. So right now it just logs me out. So if I log in, now we're logged in. If I go to the admin panel, log out, now the user is logged out. So we're an anonymous user. So what I wanna do here is I wanna write some logic around this and then write in our own functionality so we're not having to log in from the admin panel. So let's just do this. Let's bring this down and we'll just write a condition. So we'll say uh, if request dot user dot is underscore authenticated. So if the user is authenticated, authenticated, then let's go ahead and just output the username and let's output a link to the logout button. So we'll just do a link here. We'll actually add in the official link later, but for now we'll just do logout and we'll set the href and that's gonna be just an empty string. So let's end this statement right here. So we'll just do end if, and then if a user is authenticated or if they're not authenticated, we wanna go ahead and provide a login link. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we just wanna go ahead and say else, then let's go ahead and provide a link to the login page. So it looks like I missed that tag right there. And then this is gonna say login. So we're not gonna handle this functionality too much right now. This is supposed to just show an example. So let's just go ahead and check this out. So we see login, we're authenticated. We'll go here, we'll go through the admin panel. Let's log out. So now we can log in. And then if we log out here, so we see our username, log out. Now we're prompted to log in. So I just wanted to write those conditions and test that out here. So now let's actually start making a login page. So when we click on this, we wanna be redirected to a form and we wanna log in. So Django actually has this also uh, built in for us. So this is actually pretty easy to do with Django. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we'll go back here and we'll go into our views. So we'll go into our views. And the first thing we wanna do is actually import from our authentication views. So if we go to my article here, we'll go into this link right here. And let's go all the way back to the source of it. This is a great reference for all of our views. We can see all our authentication views. So we have login view, logout view, and then password reset view. So this is already built in for us. So let's start with the login view. So we wanna go ahead and grab this. So we'll just take that right there. Let's paste that into our views.py file. So that's gonna go just underneath our reverse lazy. So I wanna keep this separate. So we wanna paste that in and then we wanna start using that view. So from django.auth import our login views or our login view. And I wanna add that above all of our views here. So because it's like the first view, it's kind of like the gatekeeper here, it makes sense to put it at the top here. So typically you might put this into a different app. So right now we have our base app, but maybe you might wanna create an app for our users, but we'll just keep it in here. And I'm gonna call this custom 
login view. So custom login view because the view is already called login view. So I don't want to override that. So I just want to inherit from it. And we could use it directly actually, but I want to actually customize a few things here. So let's go ahead and create the view. And the first thing I need to do here, so we're not using a model. So we're just so used to using that at this point, I almost wrote model. Uh, we need a template here. So we're going to go into base and I'm going to create a template called login.html. So we'll create that template. And by default, the login view already provides us with a form. So just like our model form where in our update and create view, all we had to do is specify the fields. In this case, we're just going to specify fields all and that's it. So what I also want to do is redirect an authenticated user. So if a user is authenticated, they shouldn't be allowed on this page. So that's just another attribute of this view. So if we go in here, let's see, redirect authenticated user. There we go. So by default, that's set to false. So let's go ahead and go back in here. We set that and that's going to prevent a user from being on this page. So it's just going to redirect them. We'll set that to true. And then what I also want to do is override my success URL here. So once we log in, let's just write that as a method. So earlier on or early on, we set that as a, as a success URL. In this case, we'll just set the function. So we'll just do get underscore success URL. We'll pass in self. So remember, we have methods and attributes that we can work with. And then we'll just return. And then this is going to be reverse lazy. And when a user logs in, we want to send them to the tasks page. So we just want to send them to that first page and see all of the to do items, um, the list items. So we have our view. Let's go into URLs here. Let's import that. And I actually want to set that path just above this. So we'll create the path here, add in the comma at the end. And this is going to be login with a forward slash. And then we'll just do custom login view and then the name is going to be login. So we still we still don't have that template yet. So we have the URL, we have the view for now. And let's go in here and create the template called login.html. So we'll create that template login.html. So we have the template and let's just create a tag here that says login and we want to create a form here. So we'll create the form and let's see. So for our login page, we want to send this as a post request. So we just want to set the method. This is going to be post. And then we also want to send a CSRF token. So CSRF underscore token. And if you're confused with some of this logic, especially the login and registration logic, I'm actually going to recreate the same application uh, with using function based views. And in this case, as nice as these views are, uh, it's kind of nice to see what's actually happening and all the functions that are being called. So if you want to watch that one and understand in more detail of what's going on, I'll put that one out uh, not too long after this. So let's see, I don't want to put a class on here. So we just added in the token, we pass in the form, we do as P for styling here, the type is going to be a submit. And the value itself is just going to say login. Okay. So this is going to create a form for us. The view already did this for us. So right now, if I go to that page, let's go to login. So this is going to be forward slash login. Let's see. And it takes two positional arguments and one, but only one was given. What did I do here? So it looks like that might be in the URLs here, custom login view. Oh, dot as underscore view. So that needs to be set. That's the error that we'll get. And let's go back here. Okay, so we have our login form and it, cre and it created it for us. So if I hit login, now we're logged in, logged in as Dennis Ivy, and then I still need to log out. So if I refresh this now, we're logged into the admin panel. And I just realized because we're at that login view, it automatically logged us out. So if I go to login, I actually need to set that link. So give me a second. We'll create the logout functionality too. So we'll go into task list. We'll connect our user. So we want to set that in double quotes for now because the inner quotes are going to be single quotes. So we'll do URL and then login. Okay, so we're here. We go to login. We log in. Now we're officially logged in and we have that logout link. 
So if I go to the admin panel, I'll log out and now I go to that page here. So that's the login functionality. We still haven't re we still haven't restricted a user. So in theory, a user can still go to this page. So we'll add in the restrictions so they can't view that page. And we also want to add in the logout link. So let's go ahead and configure that also. So we want to import the logout view. So we'll create that and that's going to be done directly inside of our uh, inside of our urls.py. So we'll go in here. So we'll go in URLs. We won't create the custom view. So here we created the custom login view. But as I said earlier, we can actually use the views directly. So if I go to this link right here, let's go to logout view. All we have to do is send a post request here and it's going to log out our user. Or I don't even think it needs a I don't even think it needs to be a post request. So let's go in here. We'll paste that in. So from django.contrib.auth.views, logout view. Let's paste this in right here. And I think it's a simple get request. So we'll just do logout. And let's see, what do we need to do with the logout view? So I need to throw that in right here. And then this is going to be logout. And all I need to do is set the value of next page. So if we look at the attribute here, we have next page here. And that's just going to change where the user goes. So once we log out, where do we send the user? So we'll go in here, next page, and that's going to be set to the login page. So once we log out a user, we want to send the user to the login page and it looks like I'm missing a T there. So that's all we need to do to log out a, a user. So we use that built in view. Let me restart my server. looks like I have an issue there. Now that checks out. So all I have to do is take this link inside of my list view right here or a list template. And for logout, we're going to set that in double quotes and then we'll set that URL path and we'll set URL logout. Okay. So that should be it to log out our user. So let's see what we have here. So we'll go into my page here. So we log out. Now we're redirected. We log in. There we go. We can log in and log out. So if I go back here, now we're not logged in. So now we want to restrict a user. So if we go here, we're not logged in. When a user goes here, we want to redirect the user uh, back to that login page. We don't want them accessing this. Now with function based views, this can be done with simple decorators. We can also write middleware for this. But what I want to do is use uh, a mix in right here and we just want to add that into every single view that should be uh, that should be restricted here so what i'll do is underneath my login view we'll just make an import here so we'll just do from django dot views or dot contrib so from django dot contrib dot auth so we're going into the auth dot mixins so the authentication mixins and we're just going to import login required so later on you can do like r different roles that are required. So a user must be an admin and so on, but we're not going to focus on that here. So we just have this mix in and this is where mix ins are really powerful. So all I have to do is take this mix in and I actually have to add it before the view itself. So or before the built in view. So we want to restrict our task list. So we'll just add that in here as a mix in. And now this view is going to be restricted. So if our user is not logged in, so we'll go here. It just redirects us automatically. So we want to change that route. So it restricted us, but this is how Django already builds it in. It goes into accounts, login, and then goes into next. So to actually set this value myself here, what I need to do because of that mix in that I added, I want to override that setting right there. So we're going to go into settings.py. I'll just add that in the bottom here, just above my static settings right here. And we'll just do login. So login underscore URL, I believe. And we just want to let the application know where do we redirect a user if they're not authenticated. So in this case, I just want to send them to the login page. So let's go back here. We'll go try that again. So now when I click on that home page, it redirects me to the login page. So that's because we added in that mix in and then we set that login URL. So in theory, a user can still go to a single task. So let's just do task. And then let's see, do we have two? What task do we have? Let's go into, let's see. So we'll go into my tasks here, get milk. That has the ID of one. 
thought I retried that. So let's see, let's go back here. So now I'm logged in because I logged into the admin panel, but now we can go into task, pass in the ID of one, and there we go. So we can see it even though we're not logged in. If we go to this page, we're redirected. If we go here, we can see it. So to restrict the user from going to this page, all I have to do is take that login required mix in and we just need to add that anywhere we need it. So let's go to task detail. We'll add that before and remember, it does matter how we add that, add it before that view. So we'll go to task create. We also don't want somebody creating a task if they're not logged in. We also wanna make sure they can't update or delete. So now all the pages are restricted. So if I go to get milk now, there we go, I'm redirected and that's it. So that's how we can restrict a user. So what I wanna do now is make sure that a user only gets their data. So let's say that I go ahead and create an account as a different user. So we'll go in here and actually we can do this. So we'll go into the admin panel and we'll create a new user. So I'll create the registration in a second, but what I wanna do here is log in, we'll go to users and let me zoom out because that's a little bit too zoomed in. And we'll just say this user is gonna be John. So we'll say John, we'll create a password here. And then we'll just finish up that password, confirm it. Okay, so I'm gonna log out right now, and now I'm gonna log in as John. So let's see. We'll just do John again. Okay, so John is logged in, but John can see Dennis's item. So we can see we're logged in as John. The owner to get milk though is Dennis. So we created that under a different user. So what I wanna do is go ahead and restrict a user. So I'm gonna to have to customize my list view right here and make sure that only Dennis can see Dennis's items and John can only see his own items. So there's a method called get context data. And let me pull up the official documentation here. So if we go here, let's go into our views. Let's see, actually we'll close this out. We'll go to the top here because I wanna explain what get context data is. So in our typical views, we pass in context. We usually create just like a dictionary and we throw in uh, we throw in data just like that by passing it into the dictionary and setting a key value pair. So if we go in here, let's go into, let's just do detail view. We see this method, get context data. So we wanna override this and this is basically, uh, this returns back all of the data that we're passing in and we just wanna modify that data. So right now we're, we, we are returning a list of items and that's because our model here, if we go into list view, we're just getting all the tasks in the database. It doesn't matter who the user is. We're getting all the tasks and we are returning them. So we wanna modify that context data by using this method here. So I just wanna pull that up, get context data. So returns context data for displaying an object or in our case objects because we have the list view. So we just wanna override this method here. So let's go ahead and start customizing that. And uh, if you're completely new to this, this might get a little bit overwhelming. So just pay attention to how I'm writing it. So in here, we'll just do, we'll create a function here. This is gonna be inside of our task list. And we are trying to ensure that a user can only get their own data. So we'll just do a function and then we'll do get context data. We wanna override this, so we'll just set self. And then we'll just do the keyword arguments. So we'll just do quarks here. So we're just, we're just passing in the initial values. And then we wanna set the context value here. So context, and this is, just gonna be set to the original value. So we'll just do super. These are all methods for this view. So look those up and then we'll just do dot get context data. So we're just making sure that we're inheriting from the original item. We'll just set the keyword arguments. So that's gonna be star star quargs. And now we can start setting up the values here. So by default, we just return some context data. So I'll just show you what this means. So we'll just do context. And then if we wanted to add an item, let's just say, uh, um, let's see, let's just say, I'm trying to think of a name here, color, and then we wanna set the value of red. So this is how we pass in more data than just our query set. So if I go to the template now, inside of our task list, I can just say color here, and we're passing in context data. So let's go in here. Okay, so there we go, now we see red. So I'm just showing you what the, the method actually does. 
So if we go into our view, this is what we want to override. So we have our tasks. So I can actually go to context and then tasks. So we already have that. We set it right here, context object name. We just want to modify this value. So what I'm going to do is I'll get the original value. So I'll get the original context data here. So we'll go to tasks and then we'll just do dot filter. And there's different ways of doing this. So we'll do dot filter. And then I just want to make sure that we are only getting items that have the user value set to self dot request dot user. So remember we did a request dot user in the template. Well, we can access that same value right here. So we have request dot user. So all we're doing is making sure that the tasks are only the user's tasks and then we're outputting that data. So in this case, let's say I also want to output the count here. So we'll just do count. So we'll pass in more context data. And for this, we'll just do dot filter. So task dot filter will set complete. So complete is going to be uh, this is going to be set to false. So basically any item that is not complete, we want to know what's the count of uh, uh, incomplete items. And the reason why we don't have to send in the user here is because now we're filtering this set of data down here. So we're filtering a filtered uh, query set already. So we're getting that query set and we'll just do count. Okay, so we're just passing in that data. So if I go here, now if I refresh this, John should not see, let's see, cannot resolve keyword complex must have misspelled something. So we have context. Oh, this is supposed to be complete. Okay, so let me try that again. Okay, so now John has no items. Remember, we set that empty value. Now if I log in as Dennis, let's see, Dennis Ivy. There we go, we see get milk, we can add an item. Actually, we'll take care of that in a second. But if I go ahead and log out, log back in as John, there we go, now we only see John's items, which is none. So we just ensured that a user can only get their own data. Now, I also wanna make sure that whenever a user creates some data, they're only creating uh, they're only creating an item set to them. So right now, if I create uh, some items here, so if I go, if I'm logged in as John, and if I go to add tasks, I can set that value here, and I don't wanna do this. I want it to be set by default to John, and then when I add in information, when John submits this, John should see his own data. So let's just create another task here. Uh, let's just say eat sandwich. And it didn't add it to John, so I didn't set that value, but now we're adding that item. So let's go ahead and override that. So in this case, what I need to do is override a method called form valid. So this is already built in. So if we go to create, there's a method called form valid in this, in this class base view. So we'll just override that. So we'll just create that function and we'll do form underscore valid. That's already there. We take in self and the form. And what we're gonna do is as this method is being triggered because it's getting triggered by default on that post request, we're just gonna go ahead and do form dot instance. So we'll do form dot instance dot user. And in this case, we're just gonna make sure that the user is self dot request dot user. So we want to make sure it's the logged in user self dot request dot user. And then we just want to continue on with whatever else the function does. So we'll just do return and we'll do super. And then we can just add in task create. So that's the view that we're working with. So we'll just set task create and we'll pass in self. And then we'll just do dot form underscore not invalid but form dot valid. Okay, so it looks like I spelt invalid right here. So there we go, we pass in the original form and that's all we have to do. So let's take a look at what happens here. So if I go in here and what I wanna do is actually take out a certain attribute. So we no longer want that user. So if we go in here, if I go to add a task, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so form, oh, I did from, so form, and let's save it. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So if I go to task create, we see that user value right there. So I don't wanna show it. I wanna show the title, description, and complete. 
So now we can get rid of those. So we'll just do a list right here. In this case, we'll just do title, description, and then we'll just do complete. Okay, so I also wanna do that for update. So let's just do update here, save that, and that needs to be complete and complete. Okay, so now if I go ahead and add an item, so I'm logged in as John, let's just say by house, let's save that. Now we see that here, let's say rake leaves. I don't know where I get this stuff from. So we see that added to John's items here. So we see by house rake leaves, log in as Dennis. Now if I add this to Dennis, let's say uh, finish video. Okay, so that's added to Dennis and all of those values are completely separate. So we only see John's and Dennis's query sets. Those are completely separate when we create the items, those are also taken care of. So let's go ahead and create our register page. So when our user is, when the user doesn't have an account, so the first time they come here, we wanna register. At this point, we have to use the terminal or use the Django admin panel and we wanna be able to just create that from here. So the first thing I wanna do is add a link to the register page. So we'll go in here, we'll go to login. And if a user doesn't have an account, let's just ask a question. So we'll just say, don't have an account. And we'll just add that as a question. And then we wanna create a link, which for now won't point anywhere. We'll just say href, and that's gonna be an empty string. And we'll just say register. So we'll create that. We'll have to create the register page here in a second. So we're just gonna point the user there. Let's go ahead and check that out. So we wanna be able to click that and then once we create the register page, we also wanna say already have an account and let the user just log in. So let's go to our templates. Let's create a register.html. So in this case, we're actually gonna customize this functionality because there is at this point no built-in view, at least that I can see, that actually handles this for us. So we're just gonna take this template and we're just gonna say register inside of the register.html page. So we'll create that and then all the logic is gonna to have to be basically custom made here. So we'll just do register and then we'll say login for this and we'll say already have an account and then we'll ask the same question. Okay, so already have an account and we just want the user to log in. And I don't know why I keep spelling register that way. Okay, so we have a register page and we need to create the view and the URL for this. So let's go ahead and start building that out. So we'll go into our views and let me close out settings.py, close out task list, login, and we'll leave register open here. So like I said, there's no built-in view for this, but there is a view called form view. So we'll go in here, let's go into, let's see, not the source code, but the descriptions here. So if we go in here, there's a view called form view, which I wanna take a look at really quick. So we'll go to edit views, form view, and this view just basically allows us to generate a form. We are gonna use a built-in method from Django. There's a register method, but we, also, but we do need to just use this form. So this is our example of customizing a view. So let's go ahead and just start doing this. Let's go in here. So let's see, what's the first thing we need to do? We need to create the page, and we also need to import our form view. So that's gonna be from django.views.generic.edit. We'll just do form view. And there's also a method that we wanna import. So we just wanna import a method called user create. So let's just do from django.contrib.auth.forms. So we're gonna create an authentication form. So that form view that we're creating, we're actually gonna set a specific form that we wanna use. So this is a built-in form, it's called a user creation form, and this form, once it's submitted, just creates a user for us. So it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, and then we also wanna import a method called from django.contrib, and this is gonna be .auth, and then we just wanna import the login method. So what we're gonna do here is once we create a user, we want to log that user in directly, so we don't wanna force them to log in. They should already be logged in and redirected. So we imported user creation form, login, and form view. 
So now we want to actually create the register page. So let's go down here underneath our login view. Let's go ahead and create our class here. We'll just call this register page. And what I'm going to do here is import from or inherit from form view. So from form view, I want to set the template name and the template name is going to be base forward slash register and the form itself, we're going to set the form class. We want to use the built-in Django user creation form so we can customize this form. You'll see what it looks like. If we want to modify it later, we can do that. So we have that user creation form and I also want to make sure unauthenticated users or users that are authenticated, authenticated are just redirected. So we want to redirect authenticated users. And I also want to set the success URL. So once this is submitted, we'll take in success URL. We'll throw that in right here. And that's it for the base functionality. And what I want to do now is go ahead and render this form. So let's see. I want to see if this can actually be used right away. So we'll go into our URLs. We'll import this. So we'll throw that in after our custom login view. We'll throw in register right here. So we'll just set the path here and that's going to be register for the route forward slash. And then we want to set that view. So the view is going to be register page dot as underscore view. And let's see. So we want to set the name here. That's going to be register and that should render it. So let's give this a test right now. So if we go in here and you notice that in our register page, we're rendering out that form. This is that authentication form right here. So the user or not the authentication form, but the user create form that Django has for us. So if I go to register and that is not linked up, so we also need to link that up. So we'll go into login. Let's just point the user now. So we have that URL. Let's go ahead and just say URL and then register. Save that refresh it and we'll go to that page. So template does not exist register. Did I not add register.html? Let's see. Yeah, I forgot to add that. So let's throw that in right there. Let's refresh that. And there we go. So we have our template. There's really no functionality to this just yet. If we submit this, it's not going to do anything, but all this information comes from that built in user creation form. So we took that form and we passed it in, we threw that in as the form class. So now what I want to do is actually redirect the user once that form is submitted. So let's go ahead and add in this function. So we have a form valid function, which we've already used. So we have that form valid function. So in here, let's see, we'll pass in self, we'll pass in the form. And for the return value, we'll just throw this in first, we'll just throw in super. And I want to throw in register page. So the class name or the view name, we'll throw in self. And after that, we can just do dot form valid and then we pass in the form. So what I want to do here is once this form is submitted, once it's valid, I just want to make sure the user is logged in. So I'm going to set the value of user. This is going to be form dot save. So once the form is saved, the return value is going to be the user because we are working with the user create form. And we'll just say if user is none or is not none. So we'll just do is not none. So that means that if the user was successfully created, go ahead and use the login function. So this login function, we're just going to go ahead and authenticate this user. So we'll pass in the request. So self dot request here. And then we want to pass in the user that we want to authenticate. So now this user should be logged in, created, logged in and redirected. So let's try this. Let's give this a test here. So let's see. Looks like my server wasn't on. So let's turn actually no, uh, something looks wrong here. So syntax is invalid. I keep doing from so form. So we'll save that. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so it looks like I just had to restart that really quick. So my server is running. And now that should give me the register page. So let's just use my wife's name. So we'll just do Sulamita. And I'll create a password here. Confirm that password. And then let's just hit register. So if I register, 
Now Salamita has been created. She's in the database. So if I go to my admin panel, which she can't log into because she's not created as a super user, but she is now officially here. She can log out and then log back in Sulamita. And then there we go. Add a task. And let's just say task number one. So task one, and there we go. So now we can log it, register a user and log in. So what's happening here is once that post request is sent, the form val valid method is triggered. We submit this form right here, the user creation form. We get the user and we log the user in directly and just redirect the user back to that list view. Now, if we wanna view that success page or that register page, if I go to, if I try to go to register, I should be blocked from seeing this. Interesting. Let's see, redirect authenticated user. An authenticated user should be blocked from this page. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually just override that method. It looks like this attribute is either not a real attribute or for some reason it's not working. So what I'll do is I'll just create a function. And again, this is the beauty of knowing how class-based views work. So we can just write our own function. We'll pass in self, we'll throw in args and quargs, so the arguments and keyword arguments. So star star quargs. And I'm just gonna manually override this and I'm gonna say if self dot user dot or self dot request dot user dot is underscore authenticated. And that's just a method here, so we'll throw that in like that. And then, or it's a property, then we'll just do return redirect so it looks like I need to import the redirect method. So give me a second here. So that's gonna be imported from here. So redirect after render, so Django.shortcuts, and let's continue here. So we wanna redirect that user. Where did that view go? So we wanna redirect the user, and we're just gonna send the user to the tasks list. So we're just gonna manually set that. If a user is authenticated, redirect them, and any other situation, just go ahead and continue on with what you were supposed to do here. So we're just, we'll just throw in register page, we'll pass in self, and then in this case, we'll just do dot get, and we'll pass in arguments and keyword arguments. Okay, so now if I save that, that should take care of this for us. So now we're logged in, if I go here, we're redirected. If I try to go to log in, it just redirects us and it restricts us. So now what I wanna do is actually build in some search functionality here. So let's log back in as Dennis here and let's add in a few more tasks. So let's just say uh, pay bills. Um, maybe I wanna get some flowers, so get flowers here. And there we go. So we have some items and I wanna search these items. So what I'm gonna do here is first I wanna create a form here and then we wanna handle that functionality in the back end. So we'll go in here and we'll go into our template so we can close out the login and register page. We'll get to styling in a minute here. So pretty much right after this, we'll start styling everything. So we'll go in here in our list page, task list, just above our table. Let's go ahead and create a search form. So we'll create a form. The method for this is gonna be get. So we wanna send a get request. So we're not sending any post data. So we'll set that. We don't need a CSRF token. And what I'm gonna do is create two inputs. So the first one is gonna be sub, it is gonna be the submit button. So the type, this is gonna be set to submit. And then the value itself is gonna be set to search. So that's gonna be the capital S. And let's close that up right there. So we also want another input. And this input is gonna be for our uh, actual search area. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set the type. And this is gonna be text. So we wanna search some text here and I want to set the value here or the name and this is gonna be search area, search dash area. So we're gonna have the search area and the value itself here is not gonna be set by default just yet. So if I go to my page, we should be able to see that search form. If I submit it, we see that get data gets passed in but nothing really happens just yet. So what I need to do is I need to go into the back end here and I need to add in the logic for that. So we'll go into views and let's take care of this. So I'm gonna go to my task list. We see that we've already modified some data here. So I just wanna uh, keep adding to this and I'm gonna set a value and this is gonna be called search 
underscore input. So that's gonna be the search that was sent. And this is gonna be set to self dot request dot get. So we're getting the get method and out of that get method, we wanna get the search dash area. So whatever the form name was, we wanna take this value, the name of the form, we wanna get that value. And I'm gonna say search input is either gonna be that request or it's gonna be an empty string. So we can just do that because if we don't search anything, it's gonna be blank. So we just wanna set that default value. Now, all I'm gonna do is change how we filter this data right here. So we'll just create a condition and I'll just say, if search input, so if we actually have some data here, let's go ahead and modify our search field here or our query set. So we'll just do context. We'll throw in tasks here. So we'll pass that in and that's gonna be set to tasks.filter. So we'll throw that in right here and then we'll do dot filter because we are just filtering the query set and we can just throw in the title so we can search it by the title or any other value. So we'll just do title underscore underscore dot I contains and we'll throw in the search value. So search input. So if I set this, now all I'm gonna do is throw in the search, the search input itself. So we'll actually take care of that in a second. So let's try this. So if I go here, if I refresh this again, let's take this out and there we go. So let's say uh, get, so we'll throw that in and now we see that data was filtered. But at this point we are refreshing that form. So I have to manually go ahead and clear that out. So what I'm gonna do is pass in the search input. So whatever we add in, I also wanna throw that into the template. So let's just do context here and we'll just pass that in as search input underscore input and we'll throw this in. So we'll just throw in whatever the value was. So once we have that, now we have search input available in our template. So I'll just set the default value to whatever we use last because it is refreshing the page. And in this case, we're just gonna do search input. So let's try that again. Let's try this, let's just do get or GE. And there we go. And the value stays so we can just remove that. And there we go. So let's try the value of F here. So F I. Okay. So what's happening here is let's say I want to search it by the start of a word. So we see flowers right here and that works out if we want to search it this way. But let's say we want to start typing out a word and the filtration or the filtration begins at the start. So I can actually change this value. We'll go into views and we'll do title instead of I contains, we'll just do starts with, and I believe it's like that. Let's just see what that is. Let me refresh that. So there we go. So now if I type in F here, now even though another word contains it, we only get it because it's the beginning of the word. So there we go. We have the filter method added in and now let's go ahead and start styling our form. So we wanna style our edit field, our view field, delete methods and so on and make this look all good here. So let's log in and the first thing for our styling is I wanna get rid of this view page because it doesn't really do anything. I just wanna be able to view a page by going to edit here, clicking on that and then I just wanna delete it if I need to. So we'll go into our list and task list. I'm not gonna delete the URLs or anything like that. I'll leave those but let's go ahead and just take out the view method and that's gonna be it for now, so we just wanna clear that. So let's go ahead and make a template that all the other pages inherit from because if we start styling each page, we're gonna to have to add in a style link, we're gonna to have to start modifying all of these and perform styling one by one. So we wanna perform or use template inheritance here. So what we'll do is create a new template and this is gonna be main.html and this is the template that all other templates will inherit from. So Let's go ahead and create our default HTML here. So let's see, I don't know why that's not auto filling here. So there we go. I got my boilerplate code here. In most text editors, if you just start writing out HTML, it'll auto complete it for you. If not, just go ahead and manually add that. So let's go ahead and add in to do list here. So that's gonna be the title. Uh, type this out, like I said, if it doesn't auto complete, but here we go, I can remove the JavaScript and this is the main template for our page. So what I wanna do here is first, I wanna set my block tags. So I'm gonna create a div here and this is gonna be the wrapper to the main page. So I'm gonna give this a class of container. We'll set that class and then I wanna go ahead and create my block content. So this is how we can work with template inheritance. 
So let's just say block and then we'll say content and all the child elements in all the other pages will go in here. So we'll just do end block content. Okay, so we have our parent template and just to give you an example, let's go ahead and add in some styling directly here. Let's just do style and we'll just set the body color and this is gonna be gray. So background color, that's gonna be gray. If I can get that, or let's just do aqua for now. We'll make this look a lot better, but I wanna show you how this works. So if I go to my task list, so right now we're not inheriting from any template. If I refresh this, we just still see the same page. So if I go in here, we'll go into my main.html, or not my main.html, but my task list. And I'm gonna go at the top here and I need to extend that main template. So we'll just do extends. And then this is gonna be base forward slash main.html. And then what I'm gonna do is wrap all of my elements inside of the block tags. So we'll just do block content. And then we need to end block content. So we'll just do end block content. Okay, so if you look at this, this actually looks exactly like this right here. So that's, what we're, that's what's going on here. So we have the block tags and I'm just gonna take all of this and we're just gonna throw this into the block tags. So now this page is gonna take in all the parent elements of main.html and throw those in here. So if I refresh that, now the page is blue. It looks really bad right now, but it's inheriting from it. So let's go ahead and just finish this up. We'll create some space here. And I just wanna do this for all of my templates. So we'll go to, actually we won't worry about tasks because we're no longer working with that. Let's go to my login page. We'll start by wrapping that. So we'll just extend it and then we'll end the tag. Make sure all the parent elements have it. End block content. Let's go to log out and then log in. So log in now has it. If we log in, the page for our list has it. We'll go to edit, it doesn't have it yet. So we'll continue here. So we're just gonna repeat this a few times. So we'll go to register. So at this point, I'll start going fast because we finished up all the logic and we're just styling it. So we'll just do end block. That's for our register page. Save that, close it, close out login, task. Let's make sure to save it, I guess. So now we wanna to go to confirm delete. This page also needs the styling and we'll just do end block. And then let's go to task form. So for our form, and I think that's gonna be it. So this is gonna be end block down here. So we're just wrapping everything. Okay, so all the necessary pages should have the styling. So we go to edit, if we go to create, log out, register, let's go back, log in, delete. Okay, so we have the styling, so let's actually start styling the page and making it look nice. So the first thing is, I wanna start with this container. Actually, no, we want the fonts first. So let's go to Google Fonts here. So go to Google Fonts. And I wanna get a font here, and that's gonna be Nuno, I believe, what did I call that? Nunito, I don't know how to pronounce that. So we're just gonna take this right here and we can take the styling. So what I'm gonna do is go to 200 extra light or not italic. So we'll go to extra light right here, select the styling and we're just gonna take this link. So this is a free font that we can use. We'll just take this link right here. We'll throw that into my main.html and that is now gonna give styling to the rest of the page once we set it. So we just paste in that Google font and now to actually set that font, we can start using it. So let's go down here, let's take out that ugly background and let's actually set the background with a different hex. So in this case, I just wanna set the hex to like an eggshell white. So we'll do hashtag or pound FA, FA, FA. So that's gonna give it a light gray. Then for the font family, so font dash family, this is gonna be set to Nuno right here, or Nunito. So let's see, it actually shows us how to use this. So let's just take that right there and we'll paste this in here. Okay, so that's gonna set the font and we also wanna set some padding at the top. So let's just do padding top 50 pixels. And we also wrapped everything inside of a container. So let's go ahead and 
set some styling to that so we can center that and see how that works. So let's go to our container. Container here. This is going to be a width or a max width of 550 pixels. So that's going to make it responsive. So 550 px right there. We want to center that. So that's going to be margin. And let's see, we want to do margin auto. That should center it for us. And I want to set the background color to white. Background color, that's going to be, let's just do FFF. That's going to be a pure white with the pound symbol. And after the background color, we want to add in a shadow, which I'm just going to paste in. So I do have some styling already pre-built. I want to do less copying and pasting, but might end up just trying to speed this up and getting it done that way. So here we go. We added in that container. We can see that it's centered. If we make this responsive or if we start shrinking this, because it's a max width, by default, it's going to start shrinking. So let me try to grab this. I don't know why I can't get it. So there we go. And our list is fitted to this. So if we log out, go to register page, all of that is wrapped in this. So we'll go to the login page. Huh, it looks like that login link didn't work. So let's go to register. And I never set that. So let's add that. We'll just do URL. And then that's going to be set to login. Okay, so if I refresh that, there we go. Our login page, delete, and edit. Okay, so I'm going to start moving a little bit faster here. Let's go ahead and start copying and pasting a few things in here. So we'll go into main. And I'm not going to set up my static files. I'm going to leave it all in here because there's not that much to do here. So what I want to do is first set our styling for all of our header tags. So I'm going to paste this in here. And I have auto formatting on, so that's how that jumps there. And I'm going to set all the title tags. So H1, add a comma, H1 through H6, actually. Let's just do H6 here. We want to set the font to railway right here. So we'll set that, and that should update that. So we set all the fonts here. And I also want to set the color to my paragraph tag and all of my links. So we'll go ahead and paste this in right here. So we'll throw this in underneath. That'll set all the colors here. So for my links and so on, that changes that color and that looks a little bit better. So let's go into my list page here. So for every page, I want to keep a certain format here. So I just want to start styling these. So we'll go into, we'll close out register and confirm delete form. Let's go into my list page and start styling this. So the first thing is, is I want to modify all of this right here and I want to put this into like a header bar and I'll just show you what that looks like. So let's create a div outside of that. And in this case, we're going to give this a class of header bar. We'll style that in a second. So header dash bar. And inside of our header bar, I'm just going to create a div here and we're going to use CSS Flexbox here. So that's just a way, if you don't know what that is, that's just a way of creating our layouts here, makes things a little bit easier. So inside of our div, we're going to go ahead and create an intro here. We'll say H1 and let's just say hello and then whatever our username. So we'll do hello and then we'll pass in request.user. So let's just throw in that value right there. So in this case, we're going to throw in the user and I also want to make sure request.user.username. So let's just do that user name. Actually, we can leave it this way. So I want to make sure that the first name or the first letter is capitalized. So we'll just do a pipe there and we can just do dot title. So that's going to make sure that whatever your name is, the first letter is capitalized. Now underneath that, we want to create an H3 tag and in here, I'm going to set some styling with margin. We'll set that to zero. So we'll do margin and then zero. And in this case, I just want to pass in a sentence here. So we'll just say you have, and then in italics, I want to say the list of, or the number of items that, or the number of tasks that are incomplete. So remember we have this value count and it looks for all the items with a complete status of false. And it gives us uh, a number for that. So we'll go into task list and we'll just say you have and then count. And then after the italics here, we'll just say incomplete items. Incomplete items here. Okay, so we're setting the number of incomplete items or incomplete tasks. And in this case, I'm going to say tasks because we want to make this plural. So if I just do tasks like this, let's go ahead and 
see what this looks like. So if I go back here, if I just try to use this right now, so it says, hello, Dennis Ivy, you see that we capitalize that even though our name is lowercase and we have three incomplete tasks. Well, what if we log in as Sulamita? So Sulamita, like that. Okay, so we have one incomplete task. So we don't want that. And in this case, we wanna pluralize it. So let's go ahead and after S right there, let's just do double curly braces and we're just gonna say count. So we wanna pluralize, pluralize it by count. And then we'll add in a pipe here and we'll just say pluralize. Okay, so pluralize and we wanna pluralize it and we wanna say if there's more than one, add an S to that. So we see tasks like that. What happened here, I misspelled pluralize. So let me just copy and paste a value here actually and I think that needs to be in quotes. So we'll just do pluralize just like that. Okay, so now we see you have one incomplete task or task. If I log out, log in as Dennis, now it says tasks. So just a little styling there. We just wanna make sure that that is correct. Now we wanna style our condition here. So let's see, this is gonna be inside of our header bar, but outside of this div right here. So we just wanna write this condition. We'll throw that into our header bar outside of this div, we'll save that. And let's see, so what I wanna do is I wanna check the condition. So if the user is authenticated, we can take out request.user because we're already setting the username and we just have the logout message and the login message. So let's see what that looks like. There we go, looks a little bit cleaner. And let's style the header bar. So for this, I'm just gonna copy and paste some CSS. So we gave it the class of header bar right here. So let's go to main.html because we are gonna reuse this in multiple areas. We'll just paste this underneath our container. So we display it as flex that inlines all of our items, which we're about to see. We set that to justify content, set all the values and the colors inside of that for the text to white, set some padding, some border radius, and then a background color. And that's gonna be an orange color like we saw in the demo. So if I refresh this, there we go. So that inlined it and it made it look a little bit better. So what I wanna do is actually make sure that this link is white here and I don't want that underline underneath it. So we'll go back in here underneath our header bar. We'll just go into header bar and we'll style all the links here. If I refresh that, there we go. That looks a little bit better. So let's go into my actual task now. So we'll style that search bar in a second, but I wanna style all the items. So we'll go back in here and I don't wanna have a table here. So we'll go into task list. I wanna style these completely on their own. So we'll take out this table well, actually we'll leave it here, but we'll just customize all the logic underneath it. So let's see, we have our header bar and what I wanna do is actually just comment out our search bar and take out this right here. So our backlink or add link, I'm just gonna comment that out. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so we don't have that now. We have our table items. So let's see, we have our table here. And what I'm gonna do is create a div here. So we're gonna create a wrapper for that. And this wrapper is gonna have the class of task-items-wrapper. And that needs to be a dash, not a dot. So it looks like I forgot about that. Okay, so we have our wrapper for all of our tasks and I'm just gonna create my condition. So we're just gonna take these values, we'll paste that in here. We'll set empty and end four. So in here is where we wanna create a div for each task item. So we'll just do div here. And inside of this div, I wanna call this, or give it a, a class of task-wrapper. And inside of this div, let's go ahead and first check if our item is actually complete. So in our task, we'll create a condition and we'll just say, if the task is complete, style it one way. If it's not, style it another way. So we'll just do if task, dot complete so basically if this is true that means the task is complete go ahead and cross it out so let's create the end if here so end if we want to close that out and let's see so in here we want to create a wrapper around this and we'll just call this class of task dash title and let's see we have our div here 
So this is for the actual item itself inside of that wrapper. And what I wanna do here is we'll just do div, create another div, and I wanna create a complete icon. So we'll just do class, and this is gonna be task-complete-icon. So we're just gonna manually create this with some CSS. I thought about using font awesome links, but then we would have to import those, so I just wanna stay away from that. So inside of task title, we have the icon, and then let's go ahead and actually create the task itself. So we're just gonna use uh, the italics here with an i tag, and then we also wanna make sure that these are striked out, so we'll throw in the strike tag, so that S right there, and now we wanna throw in a link. So it's a little bit nested, but in here, let's throw in the actual task. Okay, so we have the task. We want to link to the edit page. So we'll take in this right here, task update. We'll throw that in right here. And there we go. So let's see what we have so far. It's not going to be styled, but now we have a crossed out item. So we also want to create an else statement, and then we'll modify this. So we have if, so if the task is complete, and we just want to create that else statement. So we'll just do else here. And I just wanna take all of this, paste that down here. And let's see, so we have task incomplete item. So that's gonna be another ID right there. We still wanna to link to the same thing, but in this case, if the task is not complete, we can take out the italics and the strike, and we can just throw that in like that. So we just want it to look normal. Okay, so there we go. There's our complete items and our incomplete items. So let's go ahead and continue this. Let's open up the text editor one more time, or another time. So we have our item here, and what I wanna do is throw in a delete icon. So outside of this condition, so we have if, else, and if, let's throw in a link here. So what I'm gonna do is take in this delete link. We'll take in the opening and closing a tag, and that's gonna be after our if, else statement. And in here, I wanna give this a class. So we also wanna style this. So this is gonna be called delete, dash link. Okay, so we have our delete link, and that just points to that delete confirm page. And instead of actually saying delete, what I'm going to do is just throw in um, a hex value here. So that's just going to be this symbol right here, which you'll see in a second. So let's actually go and look that up. So HTML uh, X icon or let's just do back arrow because that's usually how I search it. That's why I found this website. So topodal.com we can basically add in these values right here just by using this. So I just took in this HTML code right here, or did I do the hex code? No, I took in the HTML code. So we're just throwing that in right here, and that's what we have here. So that is actually inside of my if else statement. So we wanna throw that in like that, and then throw that in right here. Okay, so now let's take a look. Now we have our X icon and it's time to actually style this. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of these ones right here. I wanna get rid of that table. I don't like tables because they're a little bit opinionated and they force you to work with their styling. So I'd rather just use CSS Flexbox here to style this. So let's go back into my main.html and we wanna start styling this. So we have our header bar for our task wrapper. We'll paste in some CSS here. We display it as flex, we align the items, and that just means that they're gonna be aligned vertically. We set some padding, some background color, and a border. So if I go back to my list here, that should be inlined now. If I save that. So task wrapper, and in here we have task wrapper. Make sure that's saved. Let's go back, and I don't know why that didn't refresh. Okay, so there we go, we inlined it, and let's continue on with the styling. So I also wanna style the task title and the task link along with the complete and incomplete icons. So we'll go ahead and go back here, we'll paste these in. So we have a task title, which we added that CSS right here. We have the title, task incomplete, and complete icon. So we style the links too. And this is how we style the icons. We just create a circle. So we just create a div with a height and a width, set the border radius. One color is gonna be gray right here for incomplete and then green is gonna be, or complete is gonna be green. So if I refresh that, there we go. That looks a little bit better. And I don't know why 
that styling is still there. So task title, let's see why that's the case. So we shouldn't have, oh, the delete link. So we added in a delete link. So we have that class. So let's add that in after incomplete. Let's refresh that. There we go. So we just made that red. So if you look at that CSS, uh, we set text decoration to none, set the font size, color, and or the font weight, size, and then line height. And that's pretty much it. So now we want to style our search form. So our search form, which I just commented out, let's see, let's take a look at it. So we're going into task list.html. Let's go ahead and uncomment this. So let me look at my source code and see how I style this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, I'm actually going to create a div around my form. This div is going to have the class of search dash add dash wrapper. So it's a wrapper for my search form and my add button. So in here, I'm just going to take in my form. We'll paste that in like that. That means I can remove it from this and we still have the method and I'm actually going to add in some inline styling. So for our style, I'll just paste this in. So let me just throw that in right here. So we have style margin top 20 pixels display it. We display it as flex and we also just have our original form. So we don't do anything specific there. Now for the add button, let's go ahead and take this right here and we'll delete it from here. We just want to add in the ID of add link. So we'll just do add dash link. And instead of add link here, what I want to do is just add in a plus icon. So I have, some hex code for that or some HTML code for that. And let's take a look at that. So it's not going to be styled yet. We have our search form. So I'm going to go in and get some CSS here. So these are set with IDs, I believe. So we have my search form, search add wrapper. That should be an ID instead of a class, I believe. So let's set that and let's go to main.html and set that. So we'll paste that in right there. We have a search wrapper. We display it as flex, justify content, align items, padding, and then we set some color for the ad link and so on. So go ahead and just copy this code if you need, type that out. I also will have the source code provided. So now if we refresh that, there we go. We have our ad button. Our form is styled right here, or it's inline, but it's not fully styled. So to actually style that form, I'm just going to style all the form values for the entire page here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my list, uh, my list page. We'll go into task list and I want to add in a class to this button here. So for this input button, I just want to give it a class of button and we're going to have the same buttons throughout the entire page. So let's see, we have our button there. We can go back in here. And we'll go into, I'm going to grab some CSS here and we'll just paste this in. So now we're going to paste in our input values. So we're just styling any input field with the value or the type of text, password, text area. We're just adding a border to that, setting some styling, adding some margin to any labels that we have. And we added some CSS to any item with the class of button. So we added in our button right here. So we gave it the CSS. So let's save that. Make sure you add in this CSS from here to here. Okay, so let's save that and see what it looks like now. There we go, now we have our input field, so we can search here, let's just do finish, FI. There we go, so that's our home page. So now we're just gonna continue this, or we're gonna continue with this header bar and a lot of the same functionality in all the other pages. So if we go to our ad page, let's style this. So we styled all of our search forms, so that's why we're already getting this, we still have that container. So there's not that much we need to modify. So that's all styled because that's inheriting from this. So we'll go into our form page. So task form, and I'll pull up the demo here. And let's see, so in our form page, we'll pull this up here. So I'm gonna wrap everything inside of a div and we're just gonna create a header bar here again. So I'm actually gonna create the div, give it the class, and this is going to be header bar, header dash bar. And inside of our header bar, let's go ahead and uh, add in a condition here to send the user back. Or let's actually just add in a link here. So we'll just do a link. 
and this is gonna send the user back so we'll just do uh, HTML value so that's gonna be a back arrow so just write that in right there ampersand pound symbol 8592 and then the semicolon right there and then we just want to set the value back to the list so we'll just do the URL and then that's going back to tasks so that's inside of our header bar so if I go ahead and take out the go back button I guess I could have just copied that take out task form let's see what we have so far okay so we have our header that goes back if we go to edit add we have that back button so now let's style the actual form here so in the form all I really need to do is add in some styling to that button remember we already have a styling for a button if we give it the class of button like this so we already have that in our CSS if we add that that's gonna be taken care of we also want some padding right here so let's just do this let's wrap all of these elements inside of a div and inside of this div we're gonna give it the class of card body so we'll just do class card dash body and I just want to take this form and we're gonna pass that in right here so we'll paste it in it's still not gonna do anything yet what I'm gonna do is go back to main.html and we're gonna add in some CSS here so let's take in some CSS we'll paste that in down here and let's take a look at our form okay so that looks a little bit better we can modify things so if we go to finish video let's go ahead and cross that off everything looks good and this page is complete so let's see what else we need to do here so I also want to modify we have our form modified and I want to modify our delete page so delete page our confirmation let's go to confirm delete right here so let's go back into our code close out task form and I believe that's all the CSS we're adding so I'll just leave this page open just in case We'll close out our URLs and let's go to task confirm delete. So in here, I just want to create our header bar. So we'll just create that again. We've done this a few times. Whoops. Create the div class header dash bar. And in our header bar, I just want to send the link or add in a link to go back. So we'll paste that in right here. We're sending the user back to the task page and I'm actually going to go ahead and add in that HTML value right there for that back arrow and let's see for the link itself I want to make sure that this link is white so let's see what I need to do here so if I refresh that okay that actually already looks taken care of so I don't need to do that so we'll take out this one right here and I just want to wrap this form inside of a div with the class or with the ID of card body to add some padding so we'll just do card dash body so we can take that form paste it in right here add in the class of button here to style that let's save it and see what we have okay so that looks good let's see I want to remove get milk there we go that looks good so far and now I think I just need to style the login and register page so let's just go ahead and log out and let's modify this page so we'll go to the login page and let's go into login we'll take out confirm delete here in our login page we're going to do a lot of the same stuff here we'll create the header bar so let's go ahead and just paste in some code so around our login tag but I'd create an opening and closing tag we have our header bar let's refresh that that looks better and around our form we just want to create our div the class of card dash body and let's see we didn't close this div so let's just wrap it like this oh it looks like it did close it's right here so let's take this form copy that paste it in right there and our form just needs a class of button to style the button itself and actually need to add in that value so we added in the button and we also want to add in that question inside of our card body so let's save that let's see what that looks like okay so there we go now for our register page all the form fields are already styled we'll go to register and let's do the same here so we'll go to register.html let's take in this div right here paste that above register 
pass in that closing div, pass in card body, throw that around our form. So we'll just wrap this, take that closing div, paste it right here, add in the class of button. So at this point, we're just rinse and repeating and let's pass this in right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh that. And there we go. So I also could modify some of these form fields. So I actually wanna customize this because I don't like what this looks like. It's kind of ugly right here. Uh, we can customize these fields pretty much any way we want. So what I'm gonna do here is I can actually access each form field individually. So instead of just rendering all these out, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in a label tag and we can actually do this right here. So we'll go into label and we wanna go into our form. From our form, we wanna go into the username value. So we'll just do form.username.label. And then underneath this, we can just do form.username. So let's take a look at this and it's gonna make it look a lot better. So now we have our username and we can just keep modifying these values. So let's copy and paste this. So let's see, we can do form.password1. So that's the first password. So password1.label. And then this is gonna be form.password1. And then the next one is gonna be form.password2. So that's the confirm password. We'll just do password2, form.password2. Okay, so there we go, and that looks a little bit better. So I wanna remove that margin right there. So let's just add in some margin top to the bottom. We'll just do that inline because it's a quick thing. So style, margin, and we'll just do dash top. And we'll just add in tech, 10 pixels right there. Okay, so that completes our application. We can log in, we can register. Each user can only see their information. Let's log in as Sulamita now. Log in as a new user, we see one task. We'll update that task to complete. If we wanna add in a description, we can see that information and we can search our tasks any way we want. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. I try to create a to-do app and at the same time show you how to use class-based views. So make sure you're watching both videos if you have a hard time understanding it and be sure to reference the source code.